I'm actually part of Vic Hyper, a Hyperloop team formed by RMIT, and we entered a competition organized by SpaceX. So we actually made one of the top 30 teams in the world and got the opportunity to build our own little Hyperloop pod and take it across to the States. And we, uh, we did quite well. We got um, a special mention for our, our innovation. And yeah, so Fee was also part of that team and he told me about um, this program. And yeah, it seemed pretty exciting having um, primary school kids and uh, lower high school, school kids interested in STEM. So um, I actually like helping kids out and telling them a bit more about it and hopefully you know, get some inspir feed the inspiration that I felt when I was a kid yeah. to them and hopefully they can get something out of it. I actually went to school in India and um, the demographic obviously in India is you either right up the top or you're right up the bottom. So um, school was more theoretical in India. We didn't really get the opportunity to play around with computers and things like that. And when I was in primary school, I always wanted a computer and uh, my parents couldn't really afford to get me a computer at that point in time. I just had this feeling that I wanted to be a computer programmer. Um, but my grades were not always the best in year 12 and year 11. And actually when I finished year 12, my, my ATAR was below 50. So it wasn't, it wasn't the best, um, best score to actually go forward and do engineering at that point in time. And it seemed like I needed to find another way. So what I actually did was I went to TAFE. And from TAFE, I finished my course, which was an advanced diploma in electronics engineering. And it's after finishing that, it also inspired me and it got, it gave me a better idea and gave me the little programming knowledge and the electronics knowledge and the engineering knowledge I didn't get the opportunity to do in school when I was younger. So after that, I got a job in an engineering firm as an electronics technician. When I started uni, I also started a little business on the side, which was contracting um, and designing electronics and some software development. So that started inspiring me a bit more and I started taking whatever knowledge I had when I was learning from my TAFE course and my business into the degree and it's almost started bouncing back and forth and I started really enjoying engineering because now I've got a visual aspect of what I'm learning in theory and how it's actually applied. Then I got the opportunity to join Vic Hyper, the Hyperloop team and I was in charge of the software and the control systems. It took all everything I learned from work and uni to build something like a Hyperloop pod, which was not really written in a book. The opportunity came to write a book about it, basically. So that really drove the passion in me about engineering. And while I was there in the United States for the competition, I got approached by Tesla and they asked me if I was interested in an interview. And um, naturally I was stoked and thought, you know what, it's a good opportunity just to even get an interview. So I went for the interview. The interview process took a whole day. I had to do a presentation and about six or seven interviews after that. And they were about half an hour each. So I walked out of there when they gave me the tour and thinking this place is amazing. How, you know, we don't have anything like this in Australia. So I traveled in the States for a little while more and came back to Australia and got the call saying, hey, we like you and can you start? And that to me was a big shock. Just seeing how I always wanted to work with computers and work with little microchips and program things. And I just didn't have the opportunity when I was younger to, find, to finally getting an opportunity to work on the robots that actually make the cars at Tesla is a dream come true. What should schools be doing to help kids like yourself to give those schools opportunities, do you think? Um, I think right now with schools, it's in with the difference between India and Australia that I find is it's obviously because they're two different cultures. In India, you're sort of pushed really hard, and in Australia, you're you're almost carried a little bit. So I think what schools can do is try and put a little bit more emphasis and show students what is actually out there. Uh, I went to a public school, so we didn't really have um, a lot of the facilities a private school does. But even if, if public schools could just give kids um, a bit more knowledge about what's out there, 
I personally didn't really know too much about circuit boards and microchips while I was in school. I, if I knew, that would probably inspire me a bit more and a little earlier. So maybe just exposing, exposing and saying, hey, there's, here's a circuit board, here's a microchip, or here's a rocket, and there's actually a lot more to a rocket than, you know, just um, your, just your, your normal boom and things like that. Just explain, you know, the physics you're learning in school can actually be applied in this sense. Right. Um, that that'll just give a bit more inspiration to a lot more students. I feel, and they go, you know, the maths I'm learning, I'm actually going to be able to use it later. While well, as Pythagoras theorem, for example, I remember learning it in year ten and asking a teacher, when will I actually learn Pythagoras or need Pythagoras' theorem? She goes, you just need to learn it. And I was just, like, and I to me, I was just like, why? Anyway, so I learned it, but I didn't know why I needed Pythagoras' theorem my whole degree was based on Pythagoras' theorem. And basically, a lot of the stuff we did with the Hyperloop needed Pythagoras' theorem. So um, if, school, if schools can somehow explain that, that would inspire a lot more kids early on, I think. Somehow to make that connection between the theory and the practical. Exactly. Yeah. So do you believe in a, maybe a model where we're learning by actually doing? I, l I think that is possibly the best thing. Just. It's when you get your hands dirty, you just do something. And then when you go back and you sit back and think about it, you go, well, these are the tools I use to actually build something like that. That's pretty cool. So I needed Pythagoras' theorem. I needed Ohm's law. I needed um, division multiplication. If you in higher grades, integration, vector analysis, that sort of stuff that if you see where it's actually applied and you've actually done something with it, that's, it blows your mind.